it's Debbie here. Um, I am going to show you a couple of the modifications that I have made. This is the Speedwell uh, sling bag by Blue Cala Patterns and I'm going to just I've, I've done a couple of changes. Um, one was by mistake and the other one was intentional. So um, I'm going to show you the process that I did um, or just widening this out. The original is actually two inches narrower um, I find the the little bit extra doesn't make the bag, um, I guess, overly bulky or too large. Uh, that's just my opinion, and um, it, it, it makes it a lot more it gives it a lot more room inside. So you have a lot um, a lot more usable space on the inside of it as well. And the other thing, and this was the one that I did by mistake, is. Um, I have, instead of having the thumb lock that goes up over and clips into here, I have a turn lock here. So it opens this way. Now that was because when I made my little tab here, I didn't make it long enough. So um, it wouldn't have fit over there. So I thought, oh, <laughs> what am I going to do? So this is what I improvised with. And I actually, I don't mind it either. So. Um, the pattern itself, the original pattern, works great, but these are just a couple of modifications and I wanted to show you how I did them. So I've had lots of questions about them and I'm happy to show you what I did. Oh, the third one, <laughs> I, I guess I hadn't, um, I don't think about this one, is um, I have put two D-rings on each, one on each side so that depending on whether, if you're doing, especially if you're doing custom bags, um, whether your customer is right or left handed, they can just be um, modified. They can just move it from one side to the other. So that's um, where I'm at and I hope you enjoy the video. I'm just going to go over um, a few things that I have modified with Speedwell. Um, Really, I guess what I've done is not so much made any huge changes. Um, I've just made a few things that are, that for me anyway, um, they just kind of streamline um, what I'm doing a little bit. So uh, the first one is actually um, with the gussets. Now, in the original pattern, um, the, the gussets, there's two pieces to it. So there's actually, um, there's a set. So there's a, a front uh, front gusset, that's piece number J, and or letter J, and the back gusset is I. All I've done is put these together. I've overlapped them um, three quarters of an inch so that from one pattern piece to the other is three quarters of an inch. So that gives me my three eighths inch, three -eighths inch seam allowance. And then once I figured out that that actually worked um, the way that I was hoping it would, then I just went ahead and actually made my pattern piece. So this is the piece that I'm using now. Instead of doing, um, there's a couple of steps um, involved with sewing in the gussets. It actually works very well just to go ahead and do it in one piece. The next one that I streamlined, again this is for myself, is the pockets. So there are um, two interior slip pockets, um, kind of for the main, the main body and then the front flap also has a little slip pocket there. Now in the instructions there are two pieces that get sewn all the way around and, and turned inside out. Um, just for my own purposes, um, I've altered my pattern uh, measurements, I guess, so that it's one piece. Instead of cutting for these, there would be six different pieces. This way I only have three. Now these are, these, these are the same ones and this is a different size. There also is the uh, front flap zipper pocket and that does have to be two pieces. Um, that has to be two separate pieces uh, in order to be able to sew the zipper in properly. While I'm talking about this, um, I have the different method. Uh, actually, I've learned it from um, Celine and I've used it in some of my other videos. So in addition for sewing in the zipper pocket, 
I need a facing that is my magic number of two and a half inches by whatever width your uh, pocket is. In this case, it's six and a half. So this little facing is six and a half inches wide and two and a half inches wide. Tall. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> wide and wide and wide. It's wide by wide. So now it's going to be six and a half inches wide and two and a half inches tall. And I chose this color because my the piece that it's going to get sewn into is this. So when I when I sew this facing on, I don't want it really super visible. But my inside, the pocket, is going to be the dark. So again, with these um, bigger slip pockets for the, the main part, uh, those ones I also um, made into one piece. Really the only difference is, is that I cut um, three quarters of an inch off um, the, the dimension the, of the length. The two pieces, add those up, subtract three quarters of an inch because of the two three eighths inch seam allowances. And if, it, if it'll if it fit in there, um, you don't even have to take off the three quarters of an inch. I just did that uh, for my own purposes. Now, um, what how I did the uh, making it actually wider. Um, so I increased the overall depth. Um, so it was, it was tall by width and then I changed the actual depth of it. So it went from being about two inches thick to being four inches thick. And that was very simple. Um, it's to add an inch to your zipper panels. So um, all of your, everything that is involved with your zipper panel, of course, needs to have an inch added to it. So um, I've got, of course, well, this is this will be my lining. So lining has um, interfacing on it. Well, it all has interfacing. Um, fleece. I don't interface, or I did not interface this particular vinyl because it's not overly stretchy. So it wasn't really important to have that. But the the foam, or sorry, the fusible fleece does add a nice softness and texture to the bag. So I've um, increased this by one inch as well. So you have to make sure if you're going to change the dimensions of something that you have to make sure that you change the dimensions of every piece that it's going to affect. So in the case of the zipper panels I'm adding one inch to each of them. Of course there's two with the zipper in between so that's going to give me my extra two inches. Those zipper panels, once it's all assembled, they get sewn onto the bottom gusset. So of course this needs to be added, two inches added onto it as well. And of course the lining. Do this upside right. So really that's about all I did. Um, there's nothing super fancy um, about how I made it uh, deeper. I just added, I wanted the overall depth of it to be two inches bigger. So I just had to go around and figure out all of the pieces and really it was very simple. The only thing that it affected was the zipper panels and the gusset. So I will be um, putting the measurements, anything that I changed, I will be putting on a cutting list um, onto my, or I'll post it, whether it be on the website, on my website, or um, on my Patreon site. I'm not exactly sure how I'll work that yet, but I'll figure that out. And um, yeah, this, this piece, um, I really wish I could make it so that there's a download for it, but uh, I believe that probably would be copyright infringement anyway in in making another pattern piece. So this one you'll just kind of have to figure out yourself. It's not that hard. Um, if you have any questions about it, just let me know and I'll be happy to, to help you through it. So, um, and again, 
this one you're gonna when you're cutting these ones you have to do two sets so you have to do mirror image you cut one this way and one this way well I guess use this pattern piece but one goes this way and the other goes this way and you're gonna do two sets of those so um, I hope that helps um, if there's anything else oh I have I will have one more thing to do and that's um, how I did the turn lock on the front flap instead of um, the thumb lock with the tab so uh, I will be doing that one yet and it'll be part of this video as well I'm gonna go through just a little tip here now this is uh, the pattern pieces that I um, kind of improvised here uh, this is the front and the back gusset that I made a different pattern piece for or combined it and just did it as one. On this, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to um, sew these two pieces. We're going to put right sides together. We're going to sew here and here and then we're going to turn them. I want to make sure that my uh, seams are as accurate as I possibly can get. It's going to make a little bit of a difference in the finished product. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I only have to do this, this is one set and this is going to be the other set. So I only actually have to do this on one side of each set. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my seam allowance. So I've got 3 eighths of an inch and I'm going to go extend past here. I'm going to mark my line. Then I'm going to just pivot and mark this line. So I do have a little bit of an intersection here. The very point of this is exactly where I want to stop with my needle down, pivot, and then go the rest of the way. So I'm going to do that on both sides. And again, my seam allowance here is 3 eighths of an inch. And again, right there, I'm going to have that point. So that is ready to go there and I'm going to mark the other set as well. I've sewn both sets, uh, just done the stitching here. Um, I notch right to the corner, uh, right at that pivot point, making sure not to catch the stitching. Clip and notch. So I'm just gonna clip right to that pivot and I'm just going to take a little little piece out. It doesn't have to be really huge uh, because this isn't um, this isn't a sharp corner right here. So when I turn these, and of course I'm going to press these, and I'm going to top stitch. But because I've I've notched this side, I end up with a very nice little little crisp little corner and on this because I've clipped it allows that seam on the inside to open up or the seam allowance and again I end up getting a nice little crisp little corner there. What's going to end up happening now I'm going to press this down really well I'm going to just do my little top stitching about an eighth of an inch on each side and then this will get pressed from corner to corner. So from, from here to here, this will get pressed that way. Um, and then they will be ready to go. This whole process would have been done the same way. Um, there's a little bit more top stitching. Anybody who's already made the speed well um, and either gone by just the instructions or by my video because I did it um, according to the instructions in the video but um, this is the way that I've found works just as well for me um, and there's a little bit less bulk you don't have to put these two pieces together 
and then top stitch over the top stitching that are that you've already done. So now again um, I'm going to turn this one through, going to press really well, top stitch and it's ready to go. I have my two little gussets and they're all top stitched and I've just pressed this um, so that they're sitting exactly the way that they're supposed to be. Make sure that you do the opposite, <laughs> um, I guess, mirror image. Now, in my case, I have an industrial iron. It has um, pressurized steam, that kind of thing. Um, I can get this very, very flat. I can get a really nice crisp um, fold here, and I've found that it's fine for me um, just to press this really well. If you can't get this nice and crisp, once you have it pressed, you may want to just do a little top stitch down here. Because what's going to happen is when the, the bag is together, um, when you open up the front flap, this opens up. This allows that front flap to expand. And when you put it back and zip up, you want to make sure that this goes exactly back into position so that you don't have things kind of getting, um, uh, I don't know, <laughs> uh, muddled up inside there or, or your folds not uh, performing it the way they're supposed to. So if you, if you can't get this nice, nice and crisp, if you top stitch this, then it for sure, when this closes up again, it's going to go back into the position that it's supposed to be. So hopefully that helps you. Um, that's kind of a long explanation. <laughs> As my videos, I intend them just to be short, quick little videos, but they never <laughs> seem to be that. So um, hopefully the information is valuable to you. The next alteration that I'm doing to uh, Speedwell is instead of having the thumb lock, um, the little tab that goes into um, the tab for the strap, I'm putting a turn lock on here, um, on this front flap. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to position this first. Um, I'm going to position it on this one. It's easier, uh, and I'll show you exactly what I do, but it's easier to position this, uh, the, the actual turn part of it, on this piece after I have this one installed. So a um, couple things that I'm going to watch for on this, I'll just move this down a little bit, is of course I want it um, centered widthwise, but I also want it kind of centered according to this. Now what I have to watch take into account, I guess, is that there's going to be a 3 8 inch seam allowance, a finished seam allowance up here. So when I'm going to, um, if I want to eyeball this, I need to make sure, now I'm just placing a ruler, this is a 3 8 inch right here. So if I'm going to eyeball this as far as um, centering it this way, I need to make sure that I make allowances for that. So here I'm just kind of describing what, what I'm going to do. I can measure this and make sure, um, and I will be doing that as well, making sure that I have this centered nicely. Um, it's not going to be a huge deal, but again, it's just one of those things where uh, just a little extra time uh, sure helps in the finished product. I mean, if, if we looked at, at each thing individually, well, okay, if this is not quite centered, it probably isn't a big deal. But let's say this isn't centered and my zipper doesn't come right up to the top here, so this is down a little bit, and something else isn't centered quite right, and you know, all of those little things, they add up to a less than perfect looking bag. Um, so I try as much as I possibly can to pay attention to all of the details. A 
unfortunately, I had some uh, technical difficulties when I was trying to um, demo how I got this um, turn lock put on. I'm just going to kind of touch base with you on this. Um, what I did was I, I did, I put this part in first, then I took the male end, inserted it, locked it. Now the prongs were still open, I could still see them. And I just placed the whole thing pressed down and then it left two little marks where the prongs were in my vinyl. And from that I could just put my little marks where the uh, prongs were supposed to go through and then I could cut them and insert the prongs. So hopefully that explains, um, that's how I positioned it. I only, I put the, the top in first, then used the assembled product and placed it um, so that it would position in on the back of it properly. This is the finished product. Um, what I've got here is I have the contrasting strap. I've shown you how I've put in the turn lock here and this is the widened, this is two inches wider than um, the original pattern and also uh, the two D-ring straps here, or uh, yeah, I guess they are D-ring straps, but uh, just so that you can change over from right-handed to left-handed um, instead of just having it um, done one way. So uh, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed uh, just this little bit of a video here just to kind of give you an idea of uh, what I did to change this. Um, a little bit, nothing, nothing too major from uh, the original, but um, just a little bit difference in measurements. So this is this cute little speedwell, and the interior of it is just a little bit deeper. Um, you can actually fit a little bit more into here. So. Um, I'm actually I'm really happy with how everything has has turned out on this and um, I hope you've enjoyed my information so thanks again and uh, stay tuned and thank you for uh, being my patrons on patreon I appreciate it very much I really appreciate all the support that I get so thank you so much <laughs>